In today's video, I'm going to show you direct edit inside of Inventor 2015, which is one of the new features. Um, in the past, um, in order to take an actual model, such as a, you know, like a CATIA file or a SOLIDWORKS file, you kind of had to, you know, either work around your actual model in the sense of you'd either have to reproduce it or what you'd have to do is, you know, try to use, you know, the edit solid inside of Inventor or using another program that Autodesk had was um, Inventor Fusion. I've used Inventor Fusion in the past and, you know, honestly, you know, I've only have nice things to say about Inventor Fusion because, you know, you're able to take direct parts, you know, that were, that had no, essentially no history inside of it. Like there was no features. It was just a basic base model. And what we were able to do is directly manipulate it. I mean, for an example, you know, if you want, if you had a part that had fillets in it, or let's just say a chamfer inside of it, right? With Inventor Fusion, we'd be able to actually take a look at those features and either delete them or even change the radius or the chamfer angle or even the distance if we needed to. So, I mean, there were some nice benefits with inside Inventor Fusion. Uh, 2014 Inventor, when that rolled out, uh, Autodesk, you know, didn't put that uh, Inventor Fusion within the product design suite. You could still use Inventor tw uh, Fusion 2013, but there wasn't a 2014 release. Now, currently, um, Inventor Fusion has been phased out, but where they kind of position that now is kind of inside of the cloud now. So they have this nice interface called um, Fusion 360, where you're able to create, you know, models directly inside of the cloud. But now with Inventor 2015, you know, I applaud Autodesk on, you know, how they, you know, did this nice little feature. But, you know, we're able to directly manipulate uh, models inside of, uh, you know, Inventor. So just to kind of give you a quick example, here I'm going to go ahead and click on Open. And I'm going to first look at a CATIA file. So here I'm just going to uh, search for a CATIA V5 file. You can see here that I have this cover plate. So when I go ahead and open up this cover plate, here you can see that, you know, it is a third-party translation file, and we have a base, you know, of that model. So again, this is a dummy solid. There's no features that are inside of this, right? So on the 3D model tab and on the, um, on the modify panel, here we've got direct, right? So this is what launches our whole direct edit um, uh, feature. So when I click on it, we have some basic options here. We've got move, we've got size, we've got rotate, and we've got delete, right? So within the move command, some things that I can do is, you know, let's just say we want to, you know, increase the length here, right? I can select this face, and notice I get this triad here. So again, if you remember using Inventor Fusion, you know, some of those uh, changes that were inside of Fusion, you know, those features that were in there, essentially, I think, are part of this whole direct edit feature right here. But let's just say we, you know, rotate it around to the front view, and let me just click and drag. And notice how easy that is, right? I'm easily able to move, you know, directly however much I need within the model, you know, as I rotate the model around. So if I know the actual distance, I can specify a distance here as well. And let's just say I want to use measure from. I can say I want to measure from, uh, let's just pick, you know, this hole right here. So you can see from the front view, it's actually found that center point of that hole, and I'm able to measure from that distance. So let's just say we want to come out, you know, 150. You can see it's going to update it. And when I hit enter, and I click OK. But notice what happened inside of my model browser. Remember how it's still a base feature, right? But I made an edit. So notice that's on my model browser now. Here I've got direct edit. And right below it, I have move, right? So I'm creating these edits inside of my, my dummy solid, but now Inventor is taking those edits and saying, now it's a feature that I can actually play around with. So let's just say I'm done. I close out of it, and notice there's no environment, right? There's no other mode that I got to come out of, right? So it's kind of a feature that they've actually added inside of Inventor now. But notice here, notice this direct edit. So now if I right click on it, I can say, I want to edit this feature. So here again, I've got my move, I've got my sizes and so forth. Notice here, here's that move. If I select the icon right here or double click on it, here's that 150 value. Let's just say I change this to 200 and hit enter. Notice it automatically updates, right? If I wanted to delete, just say these holes right here, I can hit delete and I can select the faces. So I'll select the inside face, and I'll click on this face. I'll just select the inside face of the holes, and I'll click Apply. So notice those holes went away. So now I can rotate the model around, 
and I can select the inside and the outside and just the tangent faces and I'll hit apply right so now if I rotate around I can add my own holes inside of my model right if I wanted to change the size I could have done that as well so again I'll just do a quick undo and over here let me just rotate it around I just did an undo on it but I'll just right click here and I'll do edit feature and I'm back inside of the direct edit mode so here if I select size I can select you know the inside of the hole right here so now if I move my cursor in you know I can decrease the diameter or if I move my cursor out you can see I can increase the diameter so notice here you know I kind of went above and beyond the edge and it's actually cutting the edge so it understands this feature is a hole right so if I want to increase it and I'll go ahead and click apply and if we rotate this around we can see that the hole is you know definitely bigger on the other side right so some of the other options in here, um, you know, I can select on rotate and if I highlight, let's just say, you know, this face right here, again, I can highlight specific faces and edges. So now if I click and drag and just say I want to increase or decrease it by a specific angle, notice as I'm moving it, notice how easy it is. It's just with the click of a button, I'm able to move and modify, you know. My specific objects here but this is this is the nice thing right here notice here I'm actually getting features that are being built with inside of my model all right so again when I close out of it notice I still have those direct edits right so it's building that feature another thing I want to show you is within an assembly right so let's just say I have this part here but a lot of times people uh, don't realize that when they go to place you can actually place a third-party file directly into the assembly so notice here by default it's listed as parts and assemblies that's one of the reasons why i think people don't you know they won't say oh let me bring in a katia file directly or a solidworks file right so for example i've got a, an actual pillow block and that's a step file so here i've got a pillow block bearing you know with the bearing so as soon as i click on open i'm actually going to be placing that directly within the assembly so notice it does a, the conversion for me and I'm able to bring it directly within the assembly. All right, so again, I've done nothing in the background. Right, This is the first time that I'm going to actually place it. But now if I open up this, this part, again, you can see that it's its own assembly. But let's just say I want to take a look at the actual base right here. So I'll go ahead and open up this component. And you can see, again, this is just a regular base solid. And, you know, we have got some solid bodies in here as well. But you can see there's there's no features in here. There's no, you know, holes that have been cut, you know, no slot cuts, no extrusions or anything like that. Right. But what I was able to do was bring this directly in to my assembly. But let's just say we want to remove, you know, these uh, slot cuts here. Right. So, again, I'm back inside of this part. I can use that direct edit feature. I can go ahead and click on it. And let's just say I click on delete. I'll go ahead and select the faces that I want to delete. And oh, there's an error. And let's go ahead and try picking all the faces. There we go. So I just clicked on all the faces. And when I hit apply now, you can see that it removed those slot cuts, right? I mean, the other workflow would have been, you know, somebody would have created a new sketch. They would have, you know, highlighted and projected those edges and then extruded it, you know, through the hole again, right? But why do that? Now with direct edit, again, you know, I can click on direct edit again and just say, I want to change the size of, you know, the inner bearing hole, right? So here I'm again, I'm changing that diameter. I'll go ahead and apply. And that value has changed, right? This is kind of neat. If I click on move face, I mean... You probably won't be doing this, but I just want to show you the power of this direct edit. As I start moving it, it understands that this feature is a hole. But notice right over here on the side, it's actually cutting it out, right? I mean, that's the raw power of what direct edit is doing, right? It's taking that feature, inventor is understanding it, and we're able to manipulate it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, uh, you know, stay tuned for other tips and tricks, and have a great day.